like coming into this, what, what were you guys most excited about uh, exploring and kind of like what thread were you like, let's tug on this uh, kind of right from the start and see where this, where this takes us and, and did that take you in an unexpected place? Right, the one thing that jumps out at me is in our early discussions uh, around the project, um, and we talked to people of our generation, generation uh, and the generation before us and about their memories of Challenger and everyone has an indelible memory because it was such a, a traumatic event in our history and everyone thinks they have a, a full understanding and knowledge of it. It's very personal to them. And then we'd say, well, do you remember who the astronauts were? And invariably the answer would be, yes, of course, uh, we remember who all the astronauts are. Then we'd politely say, can you tell us can you name them? And they'd say, oh, yes, there's Krista McAuliffe. And then there's, and then they trail off. And they were embarrassed to realize that they didn't know who these other astronauts were and sometimes even shocked. And to us, that gave us the impetus to, and the, the creative impetus specifically to want to tell a story through the perspective of these astronauts and their families. You know, these were human beings with lives and passions and ambitions and talents and people who cared about them. And that we've lived with that image of Challenger exploding for so many years that we become desensitized to it. And what Stephen and Daniel have done so well is they've, they've reacquainted you, and in some cases acquainted you, with these characters. So by the time we get to the accident in the third episode, that image takes on a whole new meaning to you. You're invested with those seven souls who are on the Challenger, and when the inevitable happens, when that tragedy happens, it's gut-wrenching in a whole other way. Yeah, and to, to add to that, I, I remember <clears throat> the conversation we had in which it was, okay, who are, the, who are these other astronauts? Well, let's look at them. Let's start to unpack their histories. When did they come into the program? Who were they beforehand? And when we first sort of struck upon this idea of the class of 1978 and what they represented in terms of opening up space to women and people of color and multiple religions and doctors and scientists, not just white fighter pilots, when we realized that we could thread the needle and tie the shuttle to that dream of opening space up for everybody. And then we made the connection of who wound up on the Challenger. And then of course the Challenger even opened the door further for Krista. It really felt like the, 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 there was just a very clear arc and continuation between that big idea. And that for, for me personally, I, when I remember reading and stuff and starting to hit upon that, I realized that whether you were alive or not, that is as relevant today as it was 35 years ago. And I think people who are younger will hopefully identify and see how just in, in, in amazing and inspirational that moment was. Um, you know, we're, we're now standing on the cusp of more space exploration and the idea that it's not owned by one country or one gender and all of that is, is super important. Um, so I'm hopeful that the series kind of aside from the tragedy, um, reminds people of that. And the kind of the biggest surprise for me is just how cooperative uh, NASA officials that were in positions of power at that time were with you guys on this dock. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what that process was like um, requesting those interviews and uh, ultimately you know, asking some really, really hard questions uh, and, and getting some, some really honest answers that I, it just, I was shocked, honestly. Yeah, way. I mean, we, we explained our vision for the series from the beginning, and it always came from a place of, I think, sincere curiosity, as well as love for the space program in general. Our goal wasn't to crucify NASA or the agency. We didn't see this as a story of good guys and bad guys, and we were hunting for a villain. And we already understood that the Challenger is very much a story about systemic dysfunction and bureaucratic organizations. And those people are put in very tough positions, oftentimes not by their own making and their own doing. And so we just were very clear with people from NASA, this is what we're out to accomplish and we wanna hear directly from you. We made it clear that we were not gonna be interviewing people who had studied it and written books but didn't live it. And we just wanted them to be able to share their experience in an open and safe forum and we created a space for them to tell us whatever they felt comfortable telling us. And ultimately that's what you see on the screen is a very honest um, and I think sobering, as you put it, um, sort of revelatory experience. There isn't necessarily any new information. The commission pretty much covered most of it. 
Um, but it's, I think, in the candor of the interviews, you really start to feel that this story, although it was put to bed so many years ago, hasn't necessarily resolved for some of these people. And what was it like on the kind of the flip side of that? Because obviously um, interviewing the, the astronauts, families and, and the people, you know, it's a really difficult uh, job to do. Uh, and it's obviously such an emotional thing to talk about. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about what that experience was like for you guys shooting that and um, being so close to people whose lives were um, so deeply affected by this? Yeah, I, I, I have done, I've done plenty of films on dark subject matter and tragic stuff. None of it has been this far in the past. So I think it was surprising to me how ever present those emotions are for these subjects. Um, the fact that we have, we spent so much time with them, these interviews uh, in, in at, were at least three hours. Some of them, you know, took all day, I think gave us the opportunity to wind. And, and the fact that they knew that we had four hours to tell the story and that we were going to be including so much backstory gave us a chance to wind up and not do like, I'm sure some of these interviews with, with some of them who have discussed the tragedy, like question number three was tell me about that day. And often that would, we wouldn't get to that until hour two, hour three. And I think at that point, they were really ready for a watershed and really, I think, prepared to share.